This is the Beretta Model 1934. It's an obsolete, compact, blowback operated 380 pistol, and I think it's really neat. Go ahead, sit down right there, and let me regale you for the next couple minutes about why I think this pistol is so interesting. In the early 1930s, the Italian military was looking for a new pistol. And lo unto them appeared the Walther PP, and they did look upon it most covetously. How could you not? Look at those curves, the fine grooves on the slide, the gorgeous bluing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, Beretta's been around for a long time. They are legitimately the oldest continually operating firearms manufacturer in the world. They've been making firearms since they made an arquebus barrel in the 16th century. Did I pronounce that word correctly? Arquebus? Ar arquebus? Arquebus. Arquebus. Huh. Surprisingly, they didn't make a semi-automatic pistol until 1915, at least not that I'm aware of. And the Model 34, can I just call it the Model 34 for the rest of the video? I'm just gonna call it the Model 34, leave me alone. And the Model 34 was only their second semi-automatic pistol they had ever made. Because Beretta doesn't want to lose out on that fat government contract, they take the Model 1915, which was the first pistol they had made, make some changes to it, chamber it in 380 auto, and then show it off to the Italian military. The military really seems to like it, but they keep going, yeah, but Walther, they got this slide-mounted safety, and it's really cool. Beretta looks at them like they just snapped on cooked pasta in half, and then goes back to the drawing board grumbling about these military divas going on and on with, look at Walther, I want the fancy over the complicated slide safety. Who do they think they are? Built this beautiful piece of machinery, no, artwork, that is so elegant in its simplicity that anyone from a neophyte to a master can understand its operation. Fine, fine, put the stupid safety on there. They make a few versions with slide-mounted safeties, but they really don't want to. And eventually they convince the military to accept the version that we have now, which has a hammer that can sit at the half-cock position. Having achieved this victory, Beretta resolves never to put a slide-mounted safety on a gun for a client request ever again. <laughs> Model 34 becomes incredibly well-received for its size, ergonomics, and reliability. Despite being chambered in 380 auto, or 9mm quarto as it is marked here, it is well liked by its users. There's an apocryphal story that I cannot back up in any way. I can't even find out if this story is true, to be completely honest. But you know what? As my grandpa always said, the truth never stood in the way of a good story. There's an apocryphal story of an Italian officer who was working alongside the Germans in North Africa during World War II. Goes to sleep one night, having left his pistol holstered next to him, and he finds in the morning that it has been replaced with the Luger P08. Now, I'm not going to complain about that because I've never met a toggle lock that I didn't like, but I also don't want to do arms across the desert for the next two weeks trying to find a pistol that I know we ain't gonna find, all while I'm trying to conceal the suspiciously Luger-shaped bulge in my rucksack. Model 34 is chambered in 380 ACP, which goes by a whole lot of other names if you're not familiar with that one. 380 Automatic Colt Pistol, which is what ACP stands for, 9x17mm, 9mm Corto, 9mm Short, 9mm Curse, and 9mm Browning, because John Browning designed it. Like, I'm not even surprised when I look up something and I discover that it was made by John Browning. Anyway, despite the 380 chambering, or rather, because of it, the pistol is very pleasant to shoot. There's also the Beretta Model 1935, which is effectively the exact same pistol, but it's chambered in 32 auto, which is... Oh, god damn it. Interesting note about the Model 34 is that any pistols made during Italy's fascist era will have two different dates stamped on them. First is the Julian calendar date of manufacture, followed by the date of the fascist era done in Roman numerals. This pistol was made in 1940 and has the marking XVIII on it for the 18th year of the fascist era. You also get markings on the frame, and the most common ones are a crown with letters, so RE for the Army, RM for the Navy, and RA for the Air Force. Controls on the Model 34 are very simple. You have the safety and disassembly lever. Pointed forwards is fire, backwards is safe. You have the ring hammer, which, as I said before, features a half-cock position. However, engaging the half-cock position on a loaded chamber requires you to put the weapon on fire and then pull the trigger while easing the hammer forward. I just fucking shot myself! I don't advise doing that. The trigger is, uh, it 
somewhat heavy, but crisp single action trigger. You also have a lanyard loop at the bottom and a heel magazine release. Sights are eh, kind of not great. Rear notch seems fine, but the front sight is a little thin and really doesn't protrude very far up, making quick sight acquisition a tiny bit of a challenge, though that is true for most pistols of the era. Look at the front sight on this original 1911. I know that I know that like sighting was kind of based around target shooting at the time, but like, come on, my thumb my thumbnail is thicker than this. What the Internally the pistol is very simple. It's got a total of 39 parts and it's actually quite robust in its construction. With regular maintenance, these pistols should last for quite a while. Beretta really likes their open barrel slides and the Model 34 is no exception. The extractor is located here on the top of the slide and the ejector is that little centrally located tab that sticks up in there. There's even a cutout on the magazine follower for the ejector to sit into because there isn't actually a slide lock on this pistol. Once the pistol runs empty, the magazine follower just pops up against the slide and holds it in place. When you take the mag out, the slide snaps forward. You can actually use the safety as a slide catch, though that's really more for disassembly, which I'll get to momentarily. Speaking of the magazine, it's got a huge cutout in the side, so you can clearly see how much ammo you have left. I suppose dirt and debris could get into it, but I wonder if Beretta would argue that it also makes it easy for dirt and debris to fall out of it. They do say the same thing for the open slide design, so I, I don't know. Oh, I think this is kind of interesting. The, um, the detent and spring that are providing tension against the safety lever are actually the recoil spring and guide rod for the recoil spring. I'm just pulling double duty on that one. But let's move on to disassembly. If you have never seen this pistol before, I promise you are not ready for how it comes apart. I promise you. I promise you. If you have seen how this comes apart, don't spoil it for anybody, all right? Make, let them watch the video. Let them find out on their own. Are you ready? You ready? Okay. To disassemble this pistol, you will need the following. The pistol. Obviously. A metric socket and screwdriver set. A striker resetting tool. A soft-faced hammer or other striking implement. A castle nut spanner tool. Now that you have acquired these instruments, you begin by removing the magazine and placing the pistol on safe. Retract the slide to the rear and inspect the chamber to ensure that there is not a round loaded in it. Take the striker resetting tool and... I'm just fucking with you. This is really the only thing you need. This is it. The barrel comes out through the top of the slide like this. <laughs> Isn't that just absolutely goofy? The brilliance of this design is that the barrel will always be pushed back into place by the slide returning home. And the act of firing isn't really going to cause anything to make the barrel move backwards. It's just so goofy to me that that's how you remove it. I know pistols like the Colt 1908 disassemble by rotating the barrel when the slide is in a very specific spot. But like, come on, look at this. Look how you put it back together. If you don't think that's like the funniest thing, then I cannot help you. Due to its popularity and the sheer volume of pistols that were made, it was often a popular bring-back weapon for soldiers during World War II, which is why they pop up so often on the civilian market in the U.S., and most likely where mine came from. There were also commercial versions made, and in fact this pistol was manufactured from 1934 all the way until 1991 with over a million pistols produced. Good job, Beretta. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. The Beretta Model 1934. It's a fantastic little pistol that I just think is pretty cool. I've been wanting to do a video like this for a little while, so let me know if this is something you would like to see more of in the future. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching. It actually does help the channel out. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, leave a comment with the word PISTOLA in it. If you're on mobile, throw in one of those little Italian hand emojis. I said it like I was asking for extra breadsticks. You know what I mean. That one. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Am I at the 10 minute mark yet? Okay, good.
做梦了！